Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make a custom speed GUI that you can use to increase or decrease the speed of the player. So let's go ahead and crank this up a little bit and then we'll take a look. So let's go ahead and turn it up to 35. And then you can see my player runs faster than normal. And now if we turn down the speed, you can see as I'm running it gets slower and slower. And then we can crank it back up to go faster. And as I do that, the player gets faster and faster. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so to make this GUI, what you want to do is start under the starter GUI and then add a screen GUI. Under the screen GUI, you want to add a frame, which is the gray background you see around the buttons. Inside the frame, we're going to be adding a button for the add. We need a button for the subtraction, and then this middle part is a text label. So there's the add button, the subtraction button, and then the speed label. For the text of the middle label here, I set that as speed colon 16. PS16 is the default speed when the player joins the game. Okay, after you have all those items and you customize it to look how you want, we're going to be adding a local script onto this frame. Inside this local script, we're going to start by saying local frame is equal to script dot parent. Next we're going to create variables for each of our buttons, one for the add button and one for the subtraction button. So we'll start by saying local add is equal to frame dot add. And if you have your buttons with a different name, make sure you update that right here. We're going to do something very similar for the other one, so we'll say local sub is equal to frame dot sub. Finally, we'll create a variable for our label, and we'll do that by saying local speed is equal to frame dot speed. We're going to define a variable for the player service by saying local players is equal to game colon get service, and inside the parentheses, we're going to put players. We're going to make a variable to keep track of our current speed, so we'll say local current speed is equal to 16 because that's the default speed. Then we're going to create a variable for the maximum and minimum speed that we want the player to be able to go. So we'll do that by saying local max speed is equal to 50. So a walk speed of 50 is the maximum value I want for the player. And then we'll say local min speed. And I'll set this equal to zero as the lowest possible speed. Next, we're going to be defining two different functions, one for the add button and one for the subtraction button. So we'll do that by saying local function. This one is going to be for the adding, so we'll say add speed. Inside the parentheses, we're going to say local player is equal to players dot local player. Then we're going to say if current speed is less than our maximum speed then what we're going to do is we're going to set current speed equal to itself plus one. So this is how we're going to increment the speed. So every time the player clicks on the plus sign, as long as the current speed is under 50, then it's going to add one to the speed. After that, we're going to update the text on the label by saying speed dot text is going to be equal to speed and then we want to join this with the value of current speed by saying dot dot and then current speed. And finally we're going to take the value for current speed and use that as the player's walk speed. So we'll start by saying player dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed and we're going to set this equal to the current speed. Okay, so our subtraction function is going to be very similar, so I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to paste it down here. As far as the changes, we're going to start by changing the name of the function. And then here we need to check to see if current speed is greater than our minimum speed. Here, instead of adding one to the current speed, we're going to subtract one. And the rest of it stays the same. And finally, we're going to define the click events for our buttons. And we're going to start by saying add dot mouse button one click. 
and we're going to be connecting this with the add speed function and then we're going to do one for the subtraction button so we'll say sub dot mouse button one click and then we're going to be connecting this with the other function all right and there we go so depending on which button the user clicks either the add button or the subtract button it's going to run a function for the add function, it's going to take the current speed and check to make sure it's less than our maximum speed, which we set up here. If it is, then we're going to add one to the current speed and use that as our walk speed. If the player clicks on the subtraction button, then we're going to do something very similar. We're going to be checking to see if the current speed is greater than our minimum speed. And then we're going to be subtracting one from the current speed and using that as the walk speed. All right, so let's go and double check and make sure we didn't make any mistakes. So I'll start by clicking on the plus sign, and I see that it updates the label. If I click on the minus sign, it subtracts from the label. And finally, let's just go and make sure that it updates the speed of the player. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll try a low speed. And it looks like everything's working. All right, so this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.